Hey guys, it's Jam. So with GPU plotting coming up, one of the major challenges with plotting this fast is moving the plots from one place to another. So ultimately, if you're farming Chia, you need to move the plots to the hard drive. And so if you want to do this fast, you'll need something in between that layer between the hard drive and the plotter, or else you'll be bottlenecked by the hard drive disk speed. And so hard drives can write at about 200 megabytes per second. So of course you need a fast SSD uh, as that buffer. And we'll talk a little bit about those kind of requirements, but I'll walk you through how I think about this plotting architecture and uh, you know where the different bottlenecks are for some different uh, scenarios. There are ways to plot with direct attached storage. There are ways to plot over the network. Uh, and of course you'll need scripts to do all this. So uh, without uh, further ado, well, let's dive in. So I'm going to walk you guys through a few plotting examples. So this is an example of like what, what it would look like for Ice Lake. So the, the uh, blade bit RAM plot that I was using before, this would just be like a really simple example of like if you had direct attached storage, uh, like derives directly attached to the server, this is how, how fast you would need. So you basically do uh, the math you would do is right, you have 240 seconds uh, plots, that's a K32, and you would take 86,400 divided by uh, 240 seconds, and you have 360 plots per day. And so times 108.8 gigabytes for today's K32 is uh, 39 terabytes per day. So if you take, uh, that's 39.168 uh, terabytes, 39,168 gigabytes. So if we divide that by 86,400 seconds in the day, and now all of a sudden we have 0.45 gigabytes or you know, 453 seconds, uh, megabytes per second write. So that's how much as your average bandwidth can be writing to the drive, and then you need to read that much out back to back down to the drive. So you basically take, okay, how many drives do I need? How many hard drives do I need to saturate 450 megabytes per second? Well, you would need at least two, but two is gonna be kind of limited about 400 megabytes per second. So you're not gonna be fully keeping up. You're actually gonna slow this plotting down a little bit if you do it with only two. So you would actually need at least three drives writing at all times, right? And this is full bandwidth. Uh, of course, each direct connection to the SATA drive is SATA 6 gigabits per second, uh, but you can't write at 600 megabytes a second because the hard drive can only support, you know, 140 to 280 megabytes per second, depending on kind of where you are on the platter. Now, so now if we kind of move over to this new example of what's gonna happen with uh, GPU plotting, and you will see, um, you know, this is kind of how I have, I have a little setup here uh, at home to demonstrate this, but I have a, just a crappy net gig 10 gig, 10 gig switch. It has two 10 gig uh, base T ports and I have those connected to a P620 workstation. Uh, this is my development system that we've done all the testing for on uh, Blade Bit CUDA. And so in RTX 3090 is producing 94 second plots. And so we're gonna be right at about hundred terabytes per day uh, for producing these plots. And then if you look at how much the 10 gig uh, pipe can uplink at you know at, at 1250 megabytes per second at uh, 86,400 seconds a day. It's right about 100 gigs. Uh, in, in practice, in 10 gig, I think I see about 80, 90 terabytes per day. Uh, and so on this side, you know, I'm not going to be bottlenecked where right? I have a P5510 3.84 terabyte drive. Uh, this will be able to do 3.4 gigabytes a second write speed. Of course, you can't. This is PCI Express uh, 4 out of by 4. So we're not gonna be limited by any bus buses here because the drive speed is higher than the bus speed. And then on this uh, Supermicro, I just have like this little Rosewell case with a Supermicro X11 thrown in there with a, a bunch of random stuff, <laughs> you know, a bunch of drives. I just threw uh, some random drives that I had laid in there um, for this test, but we are going to uh, basically um, do a demonstration here of how this is gonna work in practice. So again, we're gonna make the plots on this P620 workstation we're going to stage them to this SSD, uh, you know, if, if I guess, you know, and then this SSD is gonna communicate back through PCI Express to the host, back through the 10 gig over to our other host and where it's gonna write the data to the drives. We're gonna do this all automated so we don't have to touch anything. And hopefully at almost full bandwidth. Okay, the script we are going to be using is called Plow and it's from my, my friend Luke. And this Plow is what I have used to move uh, multiple petabytes of data around from plotting. And so you can basically just look at the GitHub. It's just a really simple Python script that monitors a source uh, and you put in your destination and it will basically uh, take monitor that uh, the source folder for everything that is being created, any new plots there, and it will automatically rsync them to this destination. Now, the only prerequisites for this uh, are basically to set up rsync, uh, you set up SSH keys between the two systems. So we're gonna go here 
and uh, on my GPU system here that is plotting away here, as you can see here, uh, you know, nothing going on right now because uh, it's just plotting with the GPU. <laughs> uh, you, my system is pretty much idle uh, from uh, the CPU side. So if we do a git clone plow, we can copy plow dot plow dot py to uh, home, so we can make a little copy of it. Okay, so for our source, we're gonna say uh, this is mount slash SSD, and for our destination, we are going to do uh, this system. This is my SMCI system, so IP add. I'm gonna make sure I find my 10 gig so I don't screw this up. So I had a couple different uh, Ethernet's on there, so we're gonna do slash 25. Um, so we do uh, slash mount slash HDD one, and then um, you, know, you can cycle through these. So I, on this system, I have, uh, let's see, uh, five hard drives and two SSDs attached. So we'll just do them all, so we don't wanna be limited by bandwidth. So I would just go in here and type comma, 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 and there's obviously automated ways to do this that are much less, uh, <laughs> much less uh, manual than what I'm showing you here. Uh, but I'm just kind of giving you guys a simple, simple example. So HDD two, HDD three, HDD four, and HDD five. Okay, so that's it. Now we're going to save this uh, and. Um, what we can do is uh, sudo apt install uh, py, let's see, python3 pip. Oh, can't remember. Um, pip. What is it? Oh, I have it installed. Okay. But I, uh, it's installed python3 pip uh, is what you'll need. You need to do pip install aio notify. Now, if you want to... Um, yeah, if you want to do this in a virtual environment, you certainly can, but uh, it's only one package, so it's not too big a deal. And so what we're going to do now is we're gonna do SSH copy ID to jam at uh, this SIP, uh, which is the 35 uh, is the one gig. Let's see, 25 is a 10 gig down here somewhere. Grip 192, okay, <laughs> yes. 25. Okay, so we're gonna SSH copy ID, yay. Um, keys are already there. So. All right, so we're gonna do a quick iperf test just to make sure our internet is connected good. So on the system side that I'm gonna be receiving my plots, I'm gonna run iperf3-s as the server. And then on my uh, side that is going to be transmitting the plots, I'll run iperf uh, with a dash uh, p just one 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 thread we'll see what we start to start with and then uh, dash c for the ip address of the system uh as you can see we're not getting exactly 10 gigabits per second we're having some retries um i mean these systems are right next to each other on a single uh cat6 cable to a switch uh, you know this isn't a super high-end enterprise switch so i probably could go debug this and figure out what the hell's going on here with some retries but nine gigabits per second will be good enough for what we need to do today. So, uh, okay, so now we are going to make sure we have space on all the drives here on the receiving end and on the sending end on this GPU system, we're going to uh, make sure the drive is mounted because I re rebooted the system. So that's uh, always good to, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, always good to mount uh, the drive. <laughs> so, Make sure your drive is mounted. Now, if we check our flash mount slash SSD, we'll see we have some plots. I'm gonna actually remove uh, that temp file. Okay, so now we are good to go. So we're gonna start a screen called plow. We're gonna do python3 plow.py. Again, super easy way to run this script. Um, show you down here. Little happy farmer guy means we're plowing to these destinations. So now if we do dstat, we should see, yay, full 10 gig bandwidth. Uh, so 1100 megabytes per second out is what we are seeing. So we can actually use this real world 
number, right? So we're, we're seeing basically 1124 megabytes per second out times 86,400. Uh, I can't remember if they do MIB or uh, megabytes, but you know, we're right around there, right? 97 terabytes a day. So uh, this system would be extremely well balanced with a 10 gig link up for one, you know, uh, 130 90 is kind of what we're seeing. Now we can go to the receiving end and make sure we see the same thing. So we got to install these data, of course. And And we will see the same thing. It's receiving 1100 something megabytes a second. All right, and since I rebooted this system, uh, I, I'm actually going to uh, basically start, you can start the plotter again. So if I go to screen S, uh, play a bit, and I can do a history, whoops, grip, play a bit. I can find out my uh, little, my little key here. Uh, I believe this is my key that I want to use for this. Uh, enough K. Sure. Yeah, this is just my silly little test here for my house. Uh, okay, so now I'm just going to be running a little bit here in the background with CUDA. This is going to make some plots here and um, yeah, we'll be copying in the background. So we'll, we'll check back on this here in a, in a little bit and Hopefully these drives will start to be get filled up. You can see it uses pre-allocate, so it makes sure it doesn't run out of space. So the script basically is very smart, uh, we hope. Uh, and so it's basically you know, writing to as many drives as it needs to. So um, yeah, with that, uh, really exciting. That This is extremely, extremely useful. Uh, again, this you will need to figure out your data path and data pattern and how to move plots from one place to another if you're going to be replotting uh, quickly here with GPUs. So uh, hopefully this helped and I'll be posting links to the script and everything else I use in the video. Thanks.